but evil lurks in the hearts of men. The shadow knows. <laughs> Once again, your neighborhood blue coal dealer brings you the thrilling adventures of The Shadow, the hard and relentless fight of one man against the forces of evil. These dramatizations are designed to demonstrate forcibly to old and young alike that crime does not pay. Friends, here's a very important way that you can help the war effort. You know, it's coal that keeps our war plants humming. Coal that keeps our trains moving. Coal that heats our soldiers in army camps. Yes, coal that supplies vital power and heat to countless wartime activities. So you can make an invaluable contribution to the war effort this winter by cutting your coal consumption to the absolute minimum. Start your personal coal conservation program this simple way. Hold your fire. Don't let the first chilly snap send you down to the furnace. Use the fireplace. Wear warmer clothing. Wait two or three weeks later than usual before starting your furnace. The coal you save now will help the home front and the war front. And it will help you keep warmer in the really bitter months to come. The Shadow, mysterious character who aids the forces of law and order, is in reality Lamont Cranston, wealthy young man about town. Several years ago in the Orient, Cranston learned a strange and mysterious secret, the hypnotic power to cloud men's minds so that they cannot see him. Cranston's friend and companion, the lovely Margot Lane, is the only person who knows to whom the voice of the invisible shadow belongs. Today's drama... The Gibbering Things. Well, nature puts on quite an autumn show up here, Margot. Yes, doesn't it, Lamont? Yeah. yeah. Old New Hampshire's pretty country at any season, folks. Are we nearly at our destination, driver? Almost. About a mile and a half more, and we'll be at the Haunted Woods. Huh? Haunted Woods? Yes, sir. The place you've hired me to drive you to is just this side of them. Oh, Aunt Susan never told me that she lived near any haunted woods, Lamont. Uh, Miss Susan Prentice, your aunt, ma'am? Yes, Mr. Crantz and I are going to spend the weekend with her. Oh, that'll be a fine rest for you. Well, those haunted woods don't sound quiet or restful. <laughs> well, they won't bother you none. These flies, I've never been bothered in them. Neither was your aunt or Professor Sergoff. Who lives smack in the center of them. Uh, why are they called the Haunted Woods? Well, it's uh, it's said that quite a few fellas have gone into them woods and completely disappeared. There was two lumberjacks and four or five harvest hands. The sucks, I figure they simply walked into the woods on one side and out the other. <laughs> <laughs> Your logic is spoiling a nice mystery, driver. Oh, I figured a natural explanation for the gibbering things, too. Gibbering. The gibbering things? Uh huh. Ever so often, the dog gondest noise is heard in them woods. A funny, squeaking, chattering kind of noise. Don't sound like it was made by either man or beast. The folks say it's made by things. You figured that it's not made by things? Mister, that gibbering noise is made by monkeys. Monkeys? In New Hampshire. Yeah. Uh, Professor Sergoff got a couple at his place that he's brought up in South America. I admit I don't know how their squeaky little voices can be heard so far away from the professor's house. But them monkeys is the only natural explanation. Are those the haunted woods ahead of us now? Uh, yeah, yes, sir. Yeah, that's them. Heavens. What's that? Something screamed in those woods. <laughs> yes, that was just an old screech owl. Oh. Ah, there it is again. Well, screech owls will make their home this far north. They must have been brought up here like the monkeys you mentioned. That's right. Another pet of Professor Sergoff. Ah, here's Miss Prentice's place. Oh, Lamont, what a lovely little house. Now, uh, I'll uh, get your luggage out the bank. Now, let me help you, Margaret. Thank you. Uh, step directly on these flagstones. The ground's pretty wet. Well, right. uh, we had some thunderstorm today. Started early this morning and pulled down telephone wires and raised all kinds of nets. Oh, that's so? <laughs> yeah, why, well, I'd, uh, I'd like to wait and say howdy to Miss Prentice, but as long as I'm out this way, I want to drop off a package at Professor Sergar's getting late, and I'd like to be in and out of them woods before dark. Not because of the gibbering things. Well, shucks, no. 
Just that the road through there is pretty terrible. A fellow wants daylight to get over it. Uh, I'll stop off on my way back from the professor's, see if your aunt wants anything fed from the village my next trip. So, uh, so long. So long. So long. You never told me your aunt was deaf, Margot. Deaf? Well, she isn't. Well, she can't be at home then after this noisy arrival in front of the door. But it is funny that she hasn't. Aunt Susan! Aunt Sue! Aren't you sure she expected us today? Oh, of course. Well, the door's unlocked. Let's go in, Lamont. She must have stepped out for a moment. For a long moment. Let's have a look around. You take a peek at the kitchen. All right. Everything here is tidy, ship shape, and deserted. Well, the kitchen door's been left unlocked. Well, evidently your aunt didn't intend to be gone very long. Well, what do you suppose has happened to her? Oh, chances are your aunt left here this morning to pay a brief call to some neighbors and she was forced to stay there by the storm. Oh, I was beginning to think Aunt Sue had been swallowed by those gibbering things in the haunted woods. <laughs> we have Mr. Doremus' assurance those gibbering things are vastly overrated. <laughs> What's that? Well, oh, listen. It's the gibbering from those woods. It's from deep in the woods. Doesn't sound like the chattering of any monkey that I've ever heard. Lamont! That be the screech owl again? That cry sounded human. It's like a scream of mortal terror. Well, now we've been waiting almost half an hour now for Aunt Sue. She'd be here by this time if she were all right. Phone's still dead. The cab driver hasn't come back yet, and it's nearly dark. Let's go outside again and watch for him. All right. He said he wanted to be out of those woods before dark. Come on, that gibbering again. It's much closer than before. He seems to come from just the edge of those woods. And the professor who keeps monkeys lives nearly a mile from here. He's going fainter now. Traveling away. Hmm. Margo, look here. What? On the earth of this flower bed. Tiny footprints. Have they been made by a barefoot child, a baby? Since the rain, how did the baby get out here? These prints were made since I was looking around this garden only a few minutes ago. And their sole resemblance to a baby's is their size. Look closer. No child could walk upright on feet that left these impressions. They're deformed. Yes, I see now. Hmm. So whatever made the footprints didn't walk upright very far. Here it dropped on all fours. Those are prints of little hands. But only two fingers are outlined. And what horrible thumbs. These tracks were left by some animals. But what kind of an animal? I never saw a spoor like this before. Oh, neither have I. Look, they disappear here in the grass. Margo, someone's coming out of the woods. A man? What's he got on his head? It's getting so dark I can hardly see. I think it's a helmet of some sort. He's carrying a net. A net? It looks like it. Seems to be hunting for something. Ah, uh, hello there. Hello. Who are you? <laughs> We're about to ask the same question. My name is Sergov. Alexander Sergov. The well, Martini no. I'm Margot Lane, Miss Prentice's niece, Professor. Miss Prentice's niece? Yes, and this is Mr. Cranston. We just arrived to spend a few days with Aunt Susan, and she's not here. I have not seen Miss Prentice for several days. Was she expecting you and Mr. Cranston? Yes, she was. Uh, Professor, if I'm not too inquisitive, what do you hunt with a net at this time of night? I keep a small zoological collection, Mr. Cranston, and uh, one of my little animals escaped this afternoon, and I was searching for it. With my net. Dangerous animal? I see you're wearing heavy gloves. It was a small ape with sharp little teeth that can, uh, what you call, nip very painfully. Perhaps you heard a chattering in the woods a while ago. We heard something gibbering in there. That was my little pet. Does it malform hands and feet, Professor? Does it leave tracks like this? You did not see it leave those tracks? No, we found them by accident a few minutes ago. The creature I'm searching for is not a perfect specimen. Uh, these tracks are fresh, which means that it is close by, and I am most anxious to recapture it, so if you will please excuse me. Good night. Good night. Good night. Well, at least we've learned what's behind those footprints in that gibbering. I'm still wondering if that was a screech owl we heard soon after Doremus left us. What for, Lamont? I'm going to get a gun and flashlight out of my bag and do a little hunting of my own in these woods. But... Uh, where's the light switch? Here. Oh, Thanks. Well, that's a gibbering camera. It's just outside the house. You know it's only a crippled ape that... Margo, what? That face! face at the window! Where? Gone now. 
But it was pressed close against the glass. It had no features, Lamont, except eyes and a toothless mouth. It was the face of the gibbering thing! Lamont, turn your flashlight on those trees as well as on the road. That gibbering thing may be in these woods. As I'm watching, Margot. There's only one set of tire tracks on this road, so Dorema's traveled it only one way. Are you sure, Margot, that the face of the window had no features? It was just pink, bald flesh with tiny pig-like eyes and, and grinning, toothless gums. What could it have been? If you weren't having a nightmare, I don't know. Good Lord, look there. Doremus's cab turned on its side. Come on. There's Doremus. Oh. He's been thrown from his cab against that rock. His head's all crushed. Oh, Lamar. Strange, there's no blood around the wound. No blood? Someone or something has washed it absolutely clean. Look at his throat. Big bruise mark. His fall from the cab didn't do that. No. Oh. Looks as though some terrific suction had been applied by something like a giant leech. That thing with the toothless mouth. Lamont, you've got to find out what that gibbering monster is. It may have killed Aunt Sue as well as Doreen. Come on back to your aunt's house. After I see you locked safely inside, Professor Siergoff is going to receive a visit from the Shadow. Why are you so worried, Professor? What? Who is speaking to me? I cannot see anyone. I'm the Shadow. The Shadow? An invisible man? A little secret I learned in the Orient. What do you want here? I shall ask the questions. First, did you find the small ape you were hunting for? You know that I was hunting... The shadow overheard your conversation with a Miss Lane and a Mr. Cranston a while ago. Did you find the ape? Yes. What did you do with it? I visited the cages where you keep your pets and found no crippled monkey there. I was forced to shoot the animal. I buried it in the woods. After it had gorged itself on the blood of Doremus? Doremus? You didn't know he was lying dead in the woods? No, I swear I did not, Shadow. I had nothing to do with but it. But you know what killed him? No. Don't lie. You also know the reason for Susan Prentice's disappearance. I do not. Her absence will cause an intensive search. She will not be found here. This is a small house. Nothing could be concealed in it. Search it yourself. Luck has been with you so far, Professor. If telephone service hadn't been disrupted by the storm, the authorities would already have been notified and the search begun. The luck of criminals is never good for long. Your time is running out. The police will find the body of Doremus, and they'll be told about a squealing monster with a horrible toothless mouth. What? A gibbering thing has been seen tonight. Now you must think and act fast, Professor. You must think and act faster than the shadow. <laughs> Friends, if you heat your home with coal, listen. Here's some important good news. Your friendly neighborhood blue coal dealer is happy to announce that he already has available, on a first-come, first-served basis... A small supply of automatic heat regulators to aid in the urgent coal conservation program. Now listen to what an automatic heat regulator does. It takes full charge of your furnace operation, giving you a constant, even temperature day and night. It eliminates those wide swings in temperature when it's always too hot or too cold. It saves you those incessant trips to the basement when you try to control the temperature yourself. It helps protect your family against winter colds, which many doctors agree result from overheating or unstable temperatures. And most important, it saves coal vital to the war effort and money for you. An automatic heat regulator costs little to begin with and soon pays for itself in fuel savings. Don't wait for the first freeze. There are just a few automatic heat regulators available. So act now. Call your friendly blue coal dealer and place your order tomorrow. And now, back to the shadow. Lamont, did Professor Seergolf tell you anything when you visited him as a shadow? I didn't expect him to, Margot. The shadow's purpose was to force Seergolf into some revealing action. I'm confident that he'll make that action before morning, but I'm taking no chances. I'm going to leave you again now and go back into those woods. Why? Professor Seergoff doesn't confine his activities within the limits of his small home. 
I'm going to discover, if I can, where he carries on his major studies. Let me go with you, Lamont. No, I want you to stay here. Lock yourself in the house and don't leave it. I expect to be gone for some time. Oh. I expect to be gone for some time. Fine. That screech owl. What's that? Back door. Who's there? What do you... Good evening, Miss Lane. Professor Seagull. When one locks the glass panel door, the key should never be left in the lock. It is so easy to break the glass, reach inside, and turn the key. Why have you broken in here? I just saw Mr. Cranston go into the woods, and I considered this an excellent opportunity to talk with you alone. That gun. This gun will do you no harm if you're obedient. You and I are going for a little walk, Miss Lane, and you are going quietly. <laughs> Where are you taking me through these woods? You'll soon learn. Here's our stopping place. There's nothing here but trees and that big rock. Yes, watch that rock. It's swinging out like a door. It is a door to a very secret natural cave below. Ladies first, Miss Lane. I won't go down to that darkness. You need not go in darkness. We have electric light here. Step in, Miss Lane. I wish to close my bulky door. No, no, I... Do not try my patience. Go. Oh. Now, down these stairs... And you can see my little refuge. She bring cries. A little welcome for you. The hideous things that make them are behind that door. Hideous things? So you saw the little creature that escaped tonight? It pressed its awful face against the window. Don't make me look at it again. You won't see anything to frighten you when I open the door. There's nothing in this chamber except those steel cabinets around the walls, that iron water pipe above, and this heavy rope that dangles from the pipe. You will find the rope of special interest. I call your attention to the snap hook on the loose end. No, let me go. As soon as I lock no, these handcuffs no. on your wrists behind your back like this, no. I hook the rope to your cuffs like no. this. Now, I let you go. Nicely tethered. What are you going to do to me? I shall satisfy your curiosity about the gibbering things. You have seen but one. I have many such children. Children? Yes. I am their father, their creator. I am their god. I have discovered the secret of life. Of life? I have evolved a complex life form from the single cell. Nature required a billion years to do what I have done in ten. I am greater than nature. You're a madman. Am I? You shall see. The steel cabinets you see around these walls are really insulated soundproof covers for my children's cages. This lever opens the apparent cabinets. Watch. No! Before, you saw the handsomest of my little beauties. Now you can look at them again and 30 of his brothers. Hear them squeal their greetings to you. No, let me out of here. Don't be no. afraid. Their cages are strong. They cannot get at you no. now. <laughs> please, please. They're so horrible. Well, I admit that I have not as yet achieved perfection in their appearance, but I progress. <sighs> now, here is my first experiment. It resembles a shapeless sponge, but it's alive. It moves and breathes. Oh, please. And here is a little creature that lacks arms and legs. See it bounce its way about? Its brother in the next cage has twice the usual number of limbs. This one has eight hands. That one has no eyes or ears. And there's one with no head. And here's one without a body. Oh, stop it, stop but it. they're all alive, Miss Lane. All can move and fast. All have mouths and appetites, Miss Lane. For human blood. Their only diet. Human blood? Yes, I keep human cows, Miss Lane, and you are to become a human cow and feed my children. Oh, no! That is why you are tethered here. This chamber is their dining room. No. I shall pull a lever that opens their cages as I go out this door to safety. They're very greedy, but I will not let them drink too much of your blood, Miss Lane, for now you are a cow and valuable to me. <laughs> I leave you now to pull the lever. Ah! My throat! You feel the shadow's hands upon you, Sigoff. The shadow. Oh. The shadow is a man would like to close his fingers tight about your neck. As a respecter of the law, he lets you live. Oh, shadow, shadow. Unlock your handcuffs, Hugo. Don't touch me again. I will. Be quick. There. Oh, oh I'm free. I'm free and I can leave this room. Go where I won't see and hear those awful things. Yes, go. And I'll go with you out that door. Shut up. The door is locked and closed upon you, Shadow. The lever that opens my children's cages is on this side of the door, and I release them now. No! 
No! No! Uh, no! My children do not have to see a man to find him, Shadow. Their greed for blood will lead them to you. And they are to have all your blood, Shadow. You will be dead before this door is open. Dead! <laughs> It is now half an hour since that door was closed upon our former friend, the Shadow. My children have killed strong men within five minutes, so I think it is time, Miss Lane, for us to view the remains, which will be visible, I imagine. <laughs> but first, I shall reunite you with your aunt. You're my aunt here? Yes, and Forch escaped and told me of her intention to notify the authorities. I was forced to add her to my herd of cows. That herd includes the itinerant lumberjacks and harvest hands who have... Disappeared in the haunted woods. When fools hear their screams of pain, they think they hear my little screech owl. Oh, you... There's no word that gets you. Before I can safely view the dead body of the shadow, my children must be returned to their cages. And my cows take care of that. Your aunt's stall is behind this door. Aunt Sue. Aunt Sue. I will let her out. Margo. Oh, oh Margo. What a touching reunion. You shall see a great deal of each other from now on, for you will be stable together. My male cattle are in here. Come out, beasts. And don't forget that I hold the usual loaded revolver. Oh, poor man. Yes, my male cattle aren't as healthy looking as you and your aunt, Miss Lane, but they have been here a long time. They're walking. They still manufacture blood. That's all that matters. Fall in line, beasts. You with them, female cattle? No. Fall in line. Oh, come, Margo, come. There's nothing, nothing we can do. You're learning fast, Miss Prentice. Now march, all of you, to the feeding room. You ought to have an easy time tonight. My children have been fed and well. You need only pick them up and return them to their cages. Pick up those things? Yes, Miss Lane, and tenderly oh. unlock the door. Go in and do as I've told you. Now you see how tame my cattle are, Miss Lane? You will soon be like them. Hurry in there. Get my pets behind their bars. I'm anxious to come in and and pay my last respects. Your children are in their cages, Master. Ah, now we shall see. I thought the shadow would be visible in death. His mental power is gone. But I do not see him. Can you feel him, Sir Goff? Ah! Shadow! Yes, I'm not an easy victim, Sir Goff. Pick up that gun he dropped, Miss Lane. Something we cannot see has got him. If Sir Goff to us. Keep back, you men. I know how you must hate this devil, but I promise you he'll get justice. Now, everyone, leave this room. Everyone but Sir Goff. Everyone but me. You're going to be left alone here. Alone as you've left the others. No, no. Ah, no do not put those handcuffs on me. Oh, yes. Lock behind your back. No. No, not that clever rope. Do not hook me to that. The way you fastened others. Yes, yes. yes we can do to him what he right, Get out of this room, you men. We're leaving Professor Siergoff with his children. We'll turn the vampires loose on him. No, do not open those cages. Do not turn them loose on me. Please, Shadow, please. You're safe, Siergoff. The cages won't be opened. Did you say, Shadow, that those cages won't be opened? That Siergoff is safe? He's safe from those things he created. That room will be Sirgoff's prison until the police arrive to take him to another. Police? Prison. Shadow, you promised us that devil would get justice. He will. But the law must fix his punishment. We've been Sirgoff's slaves. His cattle. Those things he made have fastened on our flesh. They drank our blood. We want no police. We want no law. We want no law. They have no punishment to fit that devil's crime. We'll attend to Sirgoff. And where you are. You men have suffered here, but you're civilized men. You must abide by rules of order, not by instincts of revenge. We're no longer men. We're cattle. Sirgoff has made us beat. And there are many of us, Shadow. You are only one. Keep away from that door. We didn't want to open the door, Shadow. We only wanted to lock it. And we have locked it. We have the key. Pull the lever that opens those cages. No. You're too late, Shadow. Listen. <laughs> Sirgoff's children move fast. They've already reached their father. We've given Siergoff the justice he deserves. Well, Margot, Siergoff's cattle were too many and too quick. But Siergoff won't put the state to any expense. Your aunt's safe in her home again. And his children... Those men just trampled them after you finally forced that door. 
And I'm not sorry things happened as they did. Teargolf was going to turn those gibbering things loose on me. Well, he did turn them loose on the shadow. But, Mark, you haven't told me why the shadow wasn't killed by those monsters. Well, Sirgoff made a serious mistake. When he left other victims in that room, their hands had been secured behind their backs and fastened to the tether rope. The shadow was free. One end of the tether rope was attached to an iron pipe near the ceiling. Well, he took a moment to loop the other end with its heavy hook over the pipe and fasten it. And seated in that swing, the shadow was well above the reach of the little vampires. When you were locked in that room, I was sure it meant your death. Well, one can never be sure of anything, Margot. You know, when I was invited to your Aunt Susan's, as I recall, I had promised myself a quiet, restful weekend. <laughs> yes, I remember. <laughs> <laughs> Now let me introduce Blue Coal's distinguished heating expert, John Barclay. Thank you, Ken Roberts, and good evening, friends. I'm glad to be back with you again. And this year, with fuel so vitally needed for the war effort, I hope to bring you special information that will help you to heat your home more efficiently and economically. Thousands of tons of coal can be conserved if everyone will give special thought to the efficient operation of their furnace. Operating a heating plant efficiently is easy. And if you will follow a few simple suggestions, you can not only save considerable fuel, but your home will be healthfully heated as well. A clean furnace is number one on the list of important things that will result in conserving fuel. So put your heating plant in good working order. It's easy to clean a furnace. For tools, all you need to do a good job is an inexpensive wire brush and a scraper. You can get these at any hardware store. Why a small can of asbestos furnace cement? Have all soot and fly ash. Use the asbestos cement to seal up leaks around the smoke pipe where it enters into the chimney. Make sure that the dampers are in good working order and that all furnace doors fit tightly. Remember, a clean furnace conserves coal, gives you more heat for the fuel you burn, and will keep your family warm and healthful all winter long. I thank you. The Shadow Program is based on a story copyrighted by Street and Smith Publications. The characters, names, places, and plots are fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Again next week, The Shadow will demonstrate that the weed of crime bears bitter fruit. Crime does not pay. The Shadow knows. <laughs> Next week, same time, same station, your friendly blue coal dealer brings you another strange and thrilling adventure in the shadow's daring battle against the forces of evil. Be sure to listen. This is Ken Roberts saying, keep the home fires burning with blue coal. <laughs>